Welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show. So today we got to talk about how much money Ali Abdal has made in 2021. Because I got to say, it's in the millions. It's wild. The guy has two and a half million subscribers on YouTube and uh, has more income sources than I have fingers. So how about this? Let's review his income sources. We'll go through it together as another YouTuber who also makes millions on the platform. And uh, I'll give you my own thoughts on how much money he's making. As soon as, by the way, you subscribe, and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for doing that. And also, big thank you to Truebill for sponsoring today's video, but more on that later. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be breaking down the 15 different streams of income that me and the business as a whole made in 2021. 15, how do you keep track of it? I would much rather have like five good sources of income than 15 ones. Look at these, you got a book deals. The guy's got book deals, but uh, you know what? Let's continue. This is just getting started. Now, before we get started, I wanna give the usual caveats. The point of this video is absolutely not to flex. I'm a big fan of openness and honesty and transparency when it comes to this sort of stuff. And I've actually benefited a lot in the past from other people on the internet. Ooh, wait, was this me? Oh, there's my video. That was mine. And anytime I do one of these videos, I get a barrage of comments and messages and emails from people saying that, oh my God, this video has been incredible. It's inspired me to start my own creator journey to start. Yeah, everyone has to say this disclaimer in the beginning. I wish I could just get into it, but people would be like, oh, but Graham, you're just showing up. It's bad. So uh, yeah, basically the first two minutes of this video is a disclaimer that he's not flexing. And then you proceed to flex. That's, that's how it works. I've had a bunch of failures. My first business succeeded like seven years later at the age of around 20. And then slowly over time, as I've built up this YouTube channel and the team around it, it's now got into pretty insane proportions. Keep in mind as well that I now have a team of 17 full-time staff. 17 full-time staff. What are you doing? I, listen, I, I know he's probably got a good reason for this. You, you don't, 17 people? Now, maybe I'll understand it at the very end. I'll be like, oh yeah, he's 17. 17 people, he, he's basically hired uh, my entire class in high school, like my 12th grade class, like a whole full classroom full of people. Jeez, you don't need that many people to run a YouTube channel. I, listen, uh, until I hit like 3 million subscribers, really from, from zero to almost 2 million subscribers, just me, that's it, just me and a camera. Jack came on, we built up the second channel, then it was just me and Jack from two to three million subs. No different, not at all. Uh, and then really from 3.1 to like, let's say three and a half, we brought on Alex. But we have nine YouTube channels. How does he, he's got one YouTube channel, 17 people. Why? But let's continue. All I'm doing is candidly, transparently, and hopefully in an honest kind of way, giving you an insight into what our own business finances look like. And I'll share some of the lessons we've learned along the way in building up these 15 dis different streams of revenue. See, Ali Abdal is all about uh, productivity. He's the type of guy who you watch him to work more efficiently. Admittedly, I'm not always the most efficient person. If I really audited every hour of my time, I probably wasted too many hours this morning, just like random stuff. The blind, <laughs> sounds like I say, the blind guy came. <laughs> He, he is full eyesight, but he does the blinds in the house. So I was like, the blind guy is here. Anyway, the blind guy came to the house. And, uh, you know, that was a waste of 30 minutes. Just distracts you. So Ali Abdal is the guy who gets you on track, optimizes every hour of the day. And so for him, he's probably outsourced everything. And, and basically, it takes 17 people to do the work that he could do in 24 hours. And coming in at number 15, we have Twitch. Yes, earlier this year, I decided during lockdown that I was gonna get back into World of Warcraft, which was my favorite game when I was growing up. Now, as lowest as Twitch. My guess is he probably makes like three grand a month from this, let's see. In that time, I made a grand total of $92.27. Oh, that's not a good use of his time. Unless he's just doing this for fun, I'd cut that. Bearing in mind the gaming PC I was using for this cost about 3,000 something. It was like very, very ROI negative, but hey, it was fun and I learned some stuff along the way. All right, never do that again. That's done, Twitch is out. Coming in at number 14, we have my day job working as a doctor. So as some of you know, this year, I didn't work very much as a doctor. I was on my one year sabbatical from medicine and very recently I decided that I actually wasn't gonna go into it. But this year I did a couple of part-time shifts in the emergency department. So I worked around eight hours for each of those shifts. There were two shifts and I made 30 pounds per hour, which is 480 pounds in total. Yeah, it's not worth it for him to be a doctor anymore. I mean, think of it, like it would take him a decade to get up to a good income of let's just say 500 grand a year, $600,000 a year. He could do that in a month on a good month on YouTube, just, just doing his thing. 
without the stress, it's, it's, it's stressful becoming a doctor and without all the studies and everything. So he, he's made the right choice. In position 13, we have the fact that I was a mentor for the Building a Second Brain online course, which is run by my friend Tiago Forte. He very kindly asked me to be a mentor this year. I was also a mentor last year. And the uh, stipend that you get paid for being a mentor on the course is $1,000. All right, so he's being a mentor. How does he track all of this? Like it would take me, well, it does take me weeks to go through every income source and like track this and track that. I just forget about Twitch stuff. I just forget about that. 92 bucks. In the first half of the year, from January to August, I was living with a housemate. Her name is Sheen. She has a YouTube channel linked down below. And Sheen was a lodger in the flat that me and my brother own. And we were charging her 625 pounds in rent, which is the tax-free threshold. So that comes out to around about $835 every month. That's the, the IRS must love him. He is so meticulous about where every dollar goes. He just gives them a stack of papers. Like, here's how much money I made. Blech. That's it. And I will do a video, which is coming out very soon, on how much money I spent in 2021, so you can get an idea of the balancing act here. But in this video, we're just talking about the input side of the equation, and that brings our total to $5,635.27. Oh, and if you're interested in seeing what these properties are, I actually have a vlog about this on my second channel. It's called Ali's Appendix, if you didn't know. That'll be linked in the video description. Ali's Appendix? He got another channel. I, I had no idea this guy. Had, I thought he only had one channel. He's got one YouTube channel. Ali Appendix. How many subs he got there? He got, oh, 47,000 subscribers over there. All right, so it's a bit more of like a vloggy sort of channel, but uh, yeah, wow. Looks looks good. He's just got to post there more. Listen, for 17 people, 17 full-time people, post here every day. Coming in at number 10, we have sponsorship streams on the podcast. So I actually have two different podcasts. So she has a, she has a... Podcast two, Ali Abdul podcast. Hold on. Let's look at this. Let's audit this. Deep dive with Hello, Ali Abdal. And he is, oh, okay. Well, he started posting on it now, but all right. All right. He's just getting started with it. But again, for 17 people, you got to be posting on here at least once a week, maybe twice a week. This year so far, the podcast has brought in $19,500 in sponsorship fees. Speaking of sponsors, uh, here's a good example of this because we have Truebill sponsoring today's video and uh, they just so happen to be an app that I've used now on like basically a daily basis because they help me keep track of all this sort of stuff that Ali is doing, except Truebill just optimizes everything. Now, for those who don't know, Truebill is an all-in-one finance app for busy people like myself and probably you watching, giving you an all-in-one snapshot of basically everything finance related from your bank accounts, credit cards, subscriptions, you name it. This allows you to better set goals, identify exactly where your money is going, kind of like what Ali is doing here, and then from there you could categorize everything so you don't lose track. My favorite feature is that they allow you to identify recurring charges like subscriptions so you can see everything that you're subscribed to and then unsubscribe from it with just a tap within the app. They'll even help you lower your bills. All all you have to do is upload a photo and then from there they'll help you negotiate that down saving you a lot of money without you spending a whole bunch of time on the phone. On top of that Truebill is loaded with even more features that allow you to keep track of monthly expenses, get notifications when you spent too much money, monitor your credit score and set up an automatic savings fund that you could withdraw at any time. Plus it's incredibly simple and easy to use. They don't sell your information to third parties. They don't store any of your online banking credentials and they use the same encryption as banks do to make sure all of your information is protected. Feel free to use the link down below in the description or check out truebuild.com slash Graham Stephan. And that, you guys, is exactly how Ali Abdal is making money with sponsorships and this just happened to be a perfect example. So there you go. Let's get back to the video. For the podcast, we don't really need to worry about making money on it because thankfully the rest of the business makes enough money and then it can kind of fund the podcast as a bit of a passion project because it's just genuinely really fun for me to interview these cool people. I don't get the point of it. If it's losing money, why do it? I, I'm all for like, you just, you cut the money losers. If it's not worth it, it's not worth it. Focus on, focus on the big picture here. And that's like this, this channel here. Focus on that first. If the podcast loses, podcast should never lose money. It's a podcast. Gosh, when, when we did it, with Jack and I were doing this, the whole thing was profit. You post a video and, and the 90% is profit. Just use this. I don't get how he's losing money on that. At the moment, the portfolio has a value of £34,860.65p. I put 2,000 quid into Fastly and that's gone down by 47%. I put 2,000 into Teladoc, that's gone down by 55%. Fiverr is not doing very well. Gosh, that's why you buy the index funds. You don't have to worry about all of this. This, this is not... I have a feeling some of these are probably free stocks he's got by uh, referring people, but just index fund. It's so easy. Overall in the ISA, I contributed £20,000, which is the maximum that you can do in each financial year in the UK. 
k. I started with 46k. My investments returned me 12,000. So I made 12,000 pounds of free money that's completely tax free by virtue of the fact that I put money into this ISA and I ended up the year with 78,274 pounds. I thought for sure he'd have way more money in stocks. He's making so much money at this point. I thought for sure he'd, he'd at least have like 500 grand in stocks. Uh, it's a lot less than I thought. Huh. So actually, because I started investing this in like around about 2015 to 2018. So in that time, I put in about 76K-ish, 2018 to 2015 to 2019. And I've made like 57,000 pounds of free money by just putting money in this thing and forgetting about it in this tax-free. The only thing with this though, it's not exactly free. I mean, there there is an element of risk to this that you got to put your money to work. But otherwise, not a bad return for investing back then. Crypto, yes. I first started investing in crypto in September of or August of 2017, and I started by investing 400 pounds, but then gradually, gradually, gradually across 2017, I ended up putting large amounts of money in crypto so that by the end of 2017, or rather by January 2018, I had put in 66,237 pounds and 41p. Wow, he bought into crypto. That's uh, That was one of the worst times to buy into crypto right before the crash. So you could see the blue. He was down a while. Throughout crypto winter, as we're now calling it, from 2018 through to 2021, I was very much in the red on crypto. So you can see here, for example, my portfolio was worth 25K, even though I put in 66K, so I'd lost 40,000. People forget that this could happen. I mean, people are so oblivious. Oh, crypto is going to 100 grand. Oh, but they forget, yeah, for like three years, basically. Like, well, two and a half years. Crypto did nothing. I mean, it was down. So imagine Bitcoin going from, let's say, 60,000. What is it at now? 40,000. Let's say it goes from 40,000 down to 15,000 for three years. You know how many people are going to get bored of crypto, move on to something else? I'm just saying, this would have been a great time to slowly accumulate. So if it goes down, you just hold it. Anyway, if we add all those numbers up for the crypto gains, our total at this point for the 15 through to 6 income streams is $466,906.23. Yeah, he must have had one of his 17 uh, employees do this for him. Because I got to say, for me to be able to pull these numbers together, it would probably take a week. Probably take a week and I would have to be so precise with it. But uh, yeah, he had somebody else managing his finances on it. I, I almost guarantee you, maybe I'm wrong. This year, since 1st of January to the 2nd of December, because I'm filming this on the 3rd of December, we have gotten 74, 74 million views. Thank you, that's cool. 6.2 million hours of watch time, apologies. 1.1 million subscribers and $391,135.30 in revenue. How is he not making more? How does he have a... I'm shocked that he doesn't have a higher CPM. I, I uh, like honestly... Um, uh, he should be making ma way more than that. Why does he only have a $14 CPM? The only thing I could think of is maybe he has an, uh, more of an audience based in the UK and ad rates are lower in the UK than the US. But uh, e even this channel, I mean, we just, you know, review videos and, and I give, I just go wild on, on how much money people spend. The CPM on this one is like 25 bucks. So it's like, Way higher than this. I, I don't, I don't get it. He, unless he's not putting mid roll ads in his videos, putting mid roll ads would, would double this pretty quickly. He, he should be making more money than that. In terms of our top earning videos, by far the highest earning revenue video in 2021 is this uh, this nine passive income ideas: how I make twenty seven thousand dollars per week. And this is kind of interesting. I think Graham Stephan calls this the YouTube bullshit industrial complex or something like that. Oh, it's called the infinite monetization loop. So basically, here's how we could do it on this video. You make a video, right? I'm responding to you. Now, now I'll make ad revenue from that. Then you respond to me. So you get ad revenue on that. Then I will respond back to you and then I get the right. So it's basically we could go back and forth in these videos. And uh, But yeah, otherwise the infinite monetization loop. Uh, I make money, I talk about making money, which makes more money. And then I talk about how much money I made talking about how much money I made. Uh, that's it. That, that's the genius of uh, YouTube. <laughs> There's so much you can do with YouTube that if you can genuinely create videos that people want to click on and that people want to watch and do this consistently over a very long period of time, then you can, probably not easily, but you know, it's, it's fairly simple to understand what it takes to make a good YouTube video. I'm noticing now it's getting dark outside. So uh, what, let's see, we're 22 minutes. Yeah, in the beginning it was light outside and you could just see the sun just setting. And then at the very end, yep, it's dark. I wonder how long it took him to film this, like three hours, two hours, it's a lot. Anyway, moving on to number two. At number two, we have our favorite Skillshare, yes. Skillshare. Skillshare makes us a decent chunk of money because I have about 10. <laughs> and I got an ad for, listen, I shouldn't be watching this 22 minutes and get one ad, come on. Skillshare pays us like 
somewhere between three, four, five, six, seven cents per minute of watch time. It kind of varies month to month. I just be sitting there, just watch my own content. Just watch it every minute and be like, all right, that's another seven cents. Anyway, here is the table of what we've earned from January through to October of 2021. You'll see the royalties tab. That fluctuates between 55 to about $74,000 per month. That's impressive. The fact that he's able to generate these numbers consistently Wow, I'm curious how much he how much he uh, mentions this, but you got that that's crazy. I I like this. This this I think he's doing well, and uh, I'd like to also see this over a hundred thousand a month consistently. I I think uh, I think he could grow this. Continue doing this, this is great. And finally, we come to income stream number one, and that is the part time YouTuber Academy. So, in November of 2020, at the time, I had a team of four people ish. So it was me. I was, I was in the business full-time because I'd quit being a doctor at that point. We had Christian, who was our full-time editor in Romania. We had Angus, who was our full-time like writer slash everything. And we had Elizabeth, who was my part-time personal assistant at the time. And in around about October of 2020, um, I had the idea that, hey, we should do a course for YouTubers. Yeah, see, so mine was called the YouTube Creator Academy. It's down below in the description. And uh, honestly, everything that I did in the YouTube Creator Academy was the same stuff that I've done today. And that's what took me from zero to like three and a half million subscribers. People are really like, you know, Graham, Graham, what's changed from 300,000 to three and a half million? I'm just like, nothing, nothing has changed. It's like, I, I keep doing the same things. And that's why I don't have a team of like 17 people because at least on YouTube, I, I'm a firm believer, like when you find something that works, you keep doing it, you just get better at it. Let's get to the numbers. In cohort two, um, we capped it at 200 places. And so we made a revenue of $649,151. Cohort three was a few months later. I think we had 400 places there. That was $902,070. And cohort four, which we're in the middle of at the moment, was $1,044,085. 104,085. Wow, he's making a ton of money from that. Gosh, whatever he's doing on that, that's working. Wow. That's, Ollie. You, uh, my, my, my non-existent hat is off to you on that one. That, that's great. Most YouTubers would want to do what, you know, probably what's referred to as a sort of lifestyle business where they're just like very highly paid freelancers. Maybe they have a team of one or two people helping them with editing, helping them with the admin and the finances, but it's quite rare for YouTubers to kind of build a team of 20 people. I know Linus does it, I know Marquez does it in America, I know a few people in the UK do it as well. Maybe there's a reason for that though. And listen, I'm, I'm open, I'm open to hearing about it, but I'm that guy, uh, we, got, we got three, two other people, Jack and Alex, me, Jack and Alex, that, that, that's it. But it, it's nice, it's just, it's small, it's stress-free, you're just doing your own thing. And yeah, you know what, uh, you work crazy hours, but uh, you know what, it's just, I, I like not having the overhead. I hate overhead. I think, I think the less you could get by with, the better. And uh, you know, I, I've always been the type who saves as much money as possible. I don't buy it unless I absolutely need it, regardless of how much money I make. It's not like I'm changing anything. Um, so, you know, that's what's always worked for me and I'm, I, I stick with it, but you know what, if he's, if he's doing well with this, I'm all for it. I really enjoy being part of a team. I enjoy coming into the studio and seeing people in person. We have our kind of content brainstorm meetings on a Monday. We have our table reads on a Tuesday. We have all these things, which a few years ago, if you told me, you know, this is what being a YouTuber is gonna be like, I wouldn't really have believed it. But I don't know, it's just been a really fun, it's been an adventure. I need table reads, table reads. <sighs> YouTube videos. I don't know. I'm like half paying attention when I listen to a YouTube video. I, I first of all, I play everything 2x speed. I listen to it. I just listen to it. I don't even watch the videos most of the time. I just listen to it 2x speed. I'm kind of doing other things. I would be so interested in seeing the behind the scenes of this business and just uh, giving my unsolicited advice that nobody asked for. But uh, oh, let's continue. The concern with having a business that's, that's so reliant on YouTube is what if people don't like my content anymore? I don't think YouTube as a platform is going to die. Like, you know, I, I don't really see a world in which that's happening with any reasonable probability. But I do think it's a higher probability thing that people will just stop caring about my content. He's right though. I mean, I have seen so many channels that were making $100,000 a month. Go from that to then making nothing. Like you're making $1,000 a month, $1,500 a month. It changes so fast. And that's why I believe uh, that you gotta play it safe and you gotta save your money. Really like my 10 year vision is I wanna have a profitable business that helps people while having fun. And that's the only thing I care about. Like I, I'm trying very hard not to care that the numbers have to keep going up, the numbers have to be, keep being exponential. But 
maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm bullshitting myself. Maybe there is a level at which, like, if the numbers dip next year, I'd be thinking, oh my god, what's going on? Things, things are bad. So overall, I gotta say, great video, and if you guys want me to react to how much money he spends in a month, all you gotta do is like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and let me know down below in the comment section, because I see he just posted it, so if you wanna see me react to that and give my thoughts on how much money he's spending, just let me know. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram and on the podcast, The Ice Coffee Hour. New episodes being posted every single Sunday. Till next time.